the sea. Once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. This is the Channel Islands Visitor Center in Ventura, California. Off the coast of California in the Pacific Ocean, there are eight Channel Islands. Five of the islands are part of the Channel Islands National Park. All eight islands span 160 miles from north to south. From north to south, the Channel Islands are San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, Anacapa, Santa Barbara, San Nicolas, Santa Catalina, and San Clemente. Well, the only island I have ever been to is Catalina Island, and many years ago as a small child. Santa Catalina Island is often referred to as Catalina Island. It is 22 miles long and 8 miles wide. It is the only island with a year-round human population. The island is owned and managed by the Catalina Island Conservancy. The island is visited primarily for its tourist attraction city, Avalon, which is comparable to a Mediterranean city. You can reach Catalina Island via the Catalina Flyer from Newport Beach or the Catalina Express from Long Beach. Historically, Tongva villages date back to 10,000 years. And Farnsworth Bank is a popular diving spot with kelp forests. And there is a herd of bison, thanks to movie production in the 1920s and 1930s. And another Catalina Island favorite, the flying fish. They only pass by the islands for a few months each year, roughly from June through September. And there are boat tours to see them. And one of these days, I'll be back to Catalina. You can bet that. The southernmost island, San Clemente, is owned by the U.S. Navy. It is 21 miles long. 10,000 years ago, there were human inhabitants, but it is unclear who they were. It is speculated that it was most likely the Tongva, maybe some Chumash. All this being said, San Clemente Island is closed to the general public. San Nicolas Island, the most remote at 61 miles from the nearest point on the mainland. It is owned by the U.S. Navy and used as a weapons testing and training facility. It is also known as the Island of the Blue Dolphins. For thousands of years, the island was home to the Nicolaino people. In fact, Juana Maria, the lone woman of San Nicolas Island, was left behind when the rest of her people were taken to the mainland. She lived alone for 18 years. Her story inspired a book and a movie entitled The Island of the Blue Dolphins. San Nicolas has the least ecological diversity of all the islands. And like San Clemente, it is not open to the general public. So those were the three islands outside the National Park. I wanted to include all the Channel Islands, but the visitor center is dedicated to five islands. The story of the National Park is as follows. Channel Islands National Park was established in 1980, and then the Visitor Center opened in 1982. Robert J. Lagamarsino, whom the Visitor Center is named after, was a U.S. congressman from Ventura, California. He helped establish the Channel Islands National Park through writing legislation. You can get to the islands via Island Package Cruises, 
which run out of Oxnard and Ventura. The Channel Islands are home to one of the most biologically diverse concentrations of marine life in the world, and especially the National Park. A rich mixture of warm and cold currents and the upwelling of nutrients support over 2,000 marine species of plants and animals, 60 species of marine birds, 27 species of whales and dolphins, and 5 species of seals and sea lions. A number of Channel Islands species are found nowhere else on the planet. One of my favorites, and probably yours too, is the island fox, only found on six of the eight Channel Islands. Channel Islands National Park's mild climate with short wet winters, long dry summers, and extensive coastal fog is an example of the endangered Mediterranean ecosystem. Over 700 native plants live in the park. Over 60 of these are found nowhere else on the planet. 14 are federally listed as threatened or endangered. Notable examples of plant life. The Munchkin Dudleya, also known as the Live Forever plant, is only found on Santa Rosa Island. And Torrey Pines, only found on Santa Rosa Island and Northern San Diego County. And now for one of my favorite things, kelp forests. They are among the most productive habitats on Earth. They provide food and shelter for over 1,000 marine species. Kelp has no roots. Instead, it has a holdfast that grips the ocean floor. It is the most common seaweed around the Channel Islands. Giant kelp leaves are called blades. Giant kelp can grow 200 feet tall, and kelp can grow 2 feet per day. The substance algin is derived from giant kelp, which is found in toothpaste and ice cream. Gas-filled bladders keep the blades afloat near the surface. Kelp is just so beautiful. One hundred shipwrecks have been documented within Channel Islands National Park. Channel Islands National Park and National Marine Sanctuary protect these shipwrecks as part of our underwater cultural heritage. Channel Islands protect some of the largest seal and sea lion rookeries in the world. Each year, tens of thousands of northern elephant seals, northern fur seals, Guadalupe fur seals, harbor seals, and California sea lions congregate on the park's beaches to breed and rest. Northern elephant seals, once down to around 100 individuals, the population of elephant seals is now up to around 120,000. About 100,000 elephant seals gather on the Channel Islands each year. They breed, they pup, and they molt. Come late winter through summer, they migrate to the Bering Sea to feed on squid and deep water fish. They can reach 18 feet and 6,000 pounds. And they can dive down to the crushing depths 
of one mile and for as long as two hours. These creatures are seriously impressive and I am proud to consider them my coastal neighbors. And the visitor center had a replica of an adult who was on the smaller side and yet still quite big. Okay, two things. First, California sea lions are my favorite, so I'm letting this section play longer. Please bear with me. Secondly, all the footage in this section and some of the other sections is created by the federal government, or at least an agency of federal government, and therefore is in the public domain. The California Sea Lion. Their population is approaching 300,000. And nearly half of their population occupies San Miguel Island to breed and to pup. They can be up to 8 feet long and weigh up to 850 pounds. They are distinguished by their pointed noses, extended ear flaps, and loud bark. And they can dive down to 500 feet. Harbor seals. Worldwide, their population may be up to 500,000. They go to the Channel Islands to breed, to pup, and to molt, like other species of seal. Generally, they do not migrate. They tend to stay within 30 miles of their natural area, but they may travel a few hundred miles in search of food. They can be up to six feet long and upwards of 300 pounds. And they can dive as deep as 1,600 feet. Northern fur seals. It is estimated that there is a population of 1.1 million worldwide, but it is declining. They join other seal species to breed, pup, rest, and socialize on the Channel Islands. Like the elephant seal, they will migrate as far as the Bering Sea. They can be up to 7 feet long and weigh up to 600 pounds. They are known to dive as deep as 600 feet. Guadalupe fur seals. Like the name suggests, they are mostly found on and around Guadalupe Island in Mexico which makes the species a special site on the Channel Islands. They are actually in the same family as sea lions, having long flippers and ear flaps. Like other seals, they breed, pup, and rest, but in limited numbers on the Channel Islands, but the population is growing. They generally do not migrate, but they have traveled as far as Washington State. They can reach seven feet long and 400 pounds, and they can dive down to 250 feet.
Bald Eagles, Legends of the Skies, perhaps the most famous bird on Earth. Due to restoration efforts, bald eagles have returned to their historic range on all the Channel Islands. They hunt seabirds and fish, and they have a seven-foot wingspan. The visitor center has a small exhibit on the Chumash. As mentioned earlier, there were Tongva and Chumash inhabiting and using the islands. Fun fact, a mission was being considered in 1805, but planning ended when a measles outbreak killed 200 island Chumash. Those were some general points. Now, let's get to what makes each island special. National parks are the best idea we ever had. Absolutely American. Absolutely democratic. They reflect us at our best. Santa Barbara Island. 644 square acres, or roughly one square mile. The Tongva people fished here. Others to make use of this land include explorers, seal and abalone hunters, ranchers, and the military. And it has the largest breeding colony of the Scripps Murlet in the United States. Anacapa Island, a five-mile spine of rock plus three islets. Home to the largest brown pelican rookery in the United States. The Chumash visited Anacapa for over 5,000 years. Ranchers raised sheep from 1869 to the 1930s. And the U.S. Coast Guard built a light station in 1932. Santa Cruz Island. Pristine beaches, rugged mountains, lonely canyons, grass-covered hills. It is the largest island 61,972 acres, 22 miles long and 2 to 6 miles wide. It is the most biologically diverse. The island scrub jay is unique to this island, found nowhere else on the planet. And there was over 10,000 years of Indian habitation, and 150 years of western exploration and ranching. Santa Rosa Island, 53,051 acres, 15 miles long, 10 miles wide. Rolling hills, deep canyons, a coastal lagoon, and beaches with sand dunes. Long ago, the pygmy mammoth roamed this island. It was only found on the Channel Islands. The pygmy mammoth discovered above was the world's most complete fossil of its kind. They could reach 7 feet high and 2,000 pounds. This exhibit is a replica of the Santa Rosa dig site. The original bones are now at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. Mammoths are believed to be among the best distant swimmers among mammals of all time just as elephants are today. And that would explain how they got to the islands from the mainland. And the munchkin live forever plant, as mentioned earlier in the video. Santa Rosa Island is the only place this plant is found. For 13,000 years, the Chumash occupied this island. And then ranchers raised sheep and cattle from 1844 to 1998. And the U.S. military owned and occupied this island from 1943 to 1963. San Miguel Island. 9,491 acres. It is 8 miles long and 4 miles wide. It is the westernmost island, and it receives the brunt of the northwesterly winds, fog, and severe weather from the open ocean. 
It has one of the largest and most diverse seal and sea lion rookeries in the world, as seen earlier in this video. The native Chumash have inhabited this island for 12,000 years. And then ranchers raised sheep from 1850 to 1948. And then the Navy used the island for a bombing range for a short period of time. Fortunately, native species are making a comeback. That's what I learned about the Channel Islands National Park and the entire archipelago of the Channel Islands. The visitor center is a nice spot to spend one to two hours. Check it out, a gift shop. And there is beautiful photos, artwork, and other interactive displays. And they had this pretty nice, mostly panoramic view at the top of the building, which looked good on a cloudy day, especially that red boat. There is a garden exhibit on plants native to California and how to start your own native garden. They have a video exhibit, Treasure in the Seas, narrated by Kevin Costner. Some clips from which are in this video. And there's another quote for you.